Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our May the 24th special council meeting. As we do at the start of each meeting, they have a short moment of private contemplation, so please join me. Thank you, everyone. So I'll call this meeting to order at seven o'clock. As visitors on this land, the town of Bradford, West Gloomberry acknowledges that the land on which we gather today is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe Nation, which includes Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi Nations, collectively known as the Three Fires Confederacy. We recognize that the Huron-Wendat, Chippewa, and Haudenosaunee Nations have walked in this territory over time. In times of great change, we recognize more than ever the importance of honoring Indigenous history and culture and are committed to moving forward in the spirit of reconciliation, respect, and good health with it, all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people. So adoption of agenda, recommendation that the Special Council agenda dated May the 24th, 2022 be adopted as printed. A mover and a seconder for this. Councilor Ferragini, Councilor Orr, any additions or comments? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? And it is carried. At this time, Council, you may declare any pecuniary interest and in the general nature thereof. Seeing none, we'll move on to presentations. And it's uh, a private tree by law presentation, and it's by Dennis Flanagan. And uh, I wonder, uh, CAO McKnight, do you want to introduce, uh, give a little bit of background at this time? Sure, thanks your worship and good evening everyone. Um, so the topic of a tree preservation bylaw has been bandied about for a while now. Uh, it's actually been on council's um, Healthy Communities Advisory Committee's work plan to develop and um, um, prepare some options for council's consideration. But as a prelude to that, uh, we thought it'd be helpful to bring in some expertise and have a just a general discussion around the value that our urban tree canopy provides a community and then some uh, thoughts around tree preservation bylaws themselves and, um, and to provide a, an opportunity for council to ask questions uh, during the session. So tonight really is, is more about an information exchange and learning a bit more about uh, the, the importance that uh, these trees provide uh, to our, our area. Um, so joining us is Dennis Flanagan. Uh, Dennis is a horticulturist by training. He comes by way of Surrey, England, and has worked for um, around 20 years for Wheel and Cullen, the Garden Centers, uh, has taught horticulture at uh, Humber and Seneca Colleges. Uh, if he looks familiar, it's because you've likely seen him on some HD TV gardening shows. So he's a bit of a, uh, a, a green celebrity, so to speak. Um, and Dennis has also worked with the Ontario, the uh, Landscape Ontario Horticultural Trade Association and a number of municipalities across Ontario developing horticultural plans and tree preservation bylaws. So um, we're very appreciative that Dennis can join us. Uh, also rejoining us tonight anyway is Shan Tennyson. Um, Shan has been our landscape architect for uh, several years and has recently uh, moved on to a new opportunity, but found this project so interesting and exciting that she uh, has still been helping us out. And uh, so we thank her for, uh, for joining us too. And then Mike O'Hare, our manager of parks and facilities um, is attending us tonight as well. So uh, I'll turn things over now to Dennis. He's going to carry the, uh, the, the heavier weights here as we uh, move through the presentation. And then Shan and, um, and perhaps Michael chime in, in too when uh, questions arise. So thanks for worship and now on to Dennis. Wonderful. Um, th thank you very much for the uh, invitation. Um, as I, I press the uh, unmute button, I suddenly realized that my window's open and I can hear the, uh, the, the, the sound of chainsaws outside, <laughs> which uh, I hope it isn't bothering anyone, but it's, it's a, 
timely reminder uh, after that dreadful, uh, I live in Stovall, just south of Uxbridge, which uh, as, as you know through the news got, got hit tremendously. Um, and unfortunately we, we saw the, um, the horrible destruction of beautiful uh, trees. So uh, un unfortunately, uh, but uh, timely um, uh, happening that, that, that happened. And as we go through the presentation, maybe we can reflect on some of those, those trees. So um, Tara, thanks, um, next. And next. So um, when I was asked by Chan and, 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 and Michael to um, join this uh, presentation, um, I thought, you know what, I'm probably like many people. I've, I've never, I haven't been to Bradford in a long time. I, I drive by it like many, many people. So I, I took a day and I actually came to your community um, and, and, and drove around for a few hours. Next. And a pat on the back, congratulations. Um, you have done so much right when it comes to the environment and, and saving trees. Um, and, and so I visited with, with two sets of eyes. Um, during my introduction, it was mentioned that I was a judge with Communities in Bloom, an international judge with Communities in Bloom. So I had that hat on. I had my judge Communities in Bloom hat on. And also, I, I thought, is Bradford a place I'd, I'd like to move to? Is it, you know, would I like to, to live there? And, and so driving around, um, Tara, next, thanks. Um, yeah, wonderful. Congratulations. What a fabulous trail system uh, that you guys have, have developed. And not only the new planting of trees, but the, the preservation of the environment and, and nature. So um, you are so well ahead compared to so many other municipalities. Next. Um, this was cool. Um, this, this must be in, in someone's jurisdiction here. Um, a wonderful little parquet. Um, and if I was scoring uh, as, as we did uh, with Communities in Bloom, I would rate this playground so high because it had everything going for it. Um, it, it was safe, uh, it was appealing to, to kids, and it had such a natural setting. Um, and as, as we know, um, through recent studies, the whole idea of, of children going back to nature, uh, playing um, in natural settings, um, with uh, in, involving uh, trees is so essential for their, for their learning capability. Thanks. Um, so driving around, of course, I had to pick a, a tree, um, a, a street that, that had a tree name to it uh, so that it would be appropriate uh, for this evening. But um, what I really noted was uh, in these new, uh, particularly the new developments, thanks to um, some um, tremendous effort had been made uh, by the residents, by the communities to plant new trees. Um, be it, be it as a community group in a school, be it on their own property. Um, and I think something that I, I, I'd, I'd like you to think about um, this evening is um, all that work that went into that tree, um, the preservation that we talk about isn't just the existing mature trees that you have, but also that this, uh, Schwedler maple will be a mature tree in 50, 75 years time. And, and, and so by passing or uh, thinking about passing a tree preservation bylaw, what you're doing is actually preserving this tree um, long past when we are going to make decision making in the future. So uh, I think that's a different aspect to take on tree preservation, that all the effort and, and, and value that came from um, families and communities and school groups um, is going to be protected and preserved in the future. Thanks, Joe. Um, 
I think someone will tell me where this is. Um, it's on the outskirts of town and was just a fabulous reminder of what you have as a community. Um, and in, in, in certainly in my opinion and so many other people's opinion, um, this, is gold, this is gold dust. Um, these uh, um, ancient uh, mature trees need, um, need some sort of uh, protection um, to, to move forward. Thanks, Tara. And why? Um, and so I've always found that as I've, I've gone around um, through municipalities, townships, be it the city of, of Toronto, Kingston, Bala, um, what it always boils down to is education. Um, yet there will always be some challenges, resistance, the yays and nays of, of any bylaw, and what it boils down to is, is education. So I, I would encourage um, uh, anyone that's, that's uh, joining uh, the presentation this evening, if you wanna steal any of, any of these, they're, they're yours, steal the slides. If you're gonna have uh, community education workshops, um, or if you're hiring people to run those workshops, use these slides to help people understand the value of, of mature trees. Thanks, Tara. And here it is. Um, this, this is, um, I know Shan's gonna um, sort of expand on this a little bit later, um, but if you want some reasons for protecting, caring, and thinking about uh, what trees do for our uh, community, our environment, uh, pollution, uh, there is such an endless list of benefits um, that, that come with protecting trees. Thanks, Tara. Um, hmm. It often comes down to uh, finances, doesn't it? Uh, when you have to make council decisions and, and bylaws. And in, in the recent years, I'd I say in the last five to 10 years, there's been such an enormous amount of work done looking at um, not only the sort of tree hugging aspect of, of preserving trees, but also um, the financial benefits, the financial side of trees. And, and, and this case study um, done through the um, city of Toronto uh, was absolutely fascinating when they started to dig down into the money that actually saving trees could could create. Um, so uh, uh, another uh, you know an, another way um, to to support trees. Thank you, Tara. Um, I'm heavily involved in a, um, a movement called Tr Trees for Life, which started with the Highway of Heroes. A good friend of mine, Mark Cullen, um, started it, and now this is expanding. Um, a, a, across um, across the country. Um, I think the poignant part about this message is, you know, we do a lot of talking about planting trees, which, which is fabulous. That's the future. Um, it, you know, we have to continue doing that. But as I mentioned earlier, earlier it takes 50 to 100 years for one of these breathing machines to become a mature tree. And, and so until that happens, we, we have to um, look at what we already already have. Thanks, Tara. And there's many, many ways to look at why we should save trees. And if nothing else, um, it's history, it's, it's a legacy. And a, a, um, a touching story is um, something called the Vimy, Vimy Oak story. Um, and so back in the Second World War in, in, in Vimy, at Vimy Ridge, a uh, uh, Canadian soldier, Le Leslie Miller, li lying, in, lying in the trenches, um, looked up and, and noticed a mature oak tree. And um, uh, I guess in between uh, ducking bullets, he, uh, he filled his pockets with acorns and brought them back to um, his farmstead in, in Scarborough, Ontario, and planted those acorns. 
um, and, 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 and actually grew a beautiful stand of um, oak trees. Um, that was his way of, of sort of uh, getting over the traumas of, of surviving, uh, surviving the war. Anyway, a, a nursery, Collins Nursery out in Waterdown, decided that they would propagate um, those uh, Vimy oak trees, and they did, and actually took them back to France uh, to Vimy, Vimy Ridge, and which was an absolute desolate place uh, right now uh, due, to the, due to the war. And those um, oak trees were replanted at, at Vimy Ridge. So um, sometimes it's not just the, the, the hardware, it's not just the tree, it's the story behind the tree that makes a difference. Thanks, Jeff. You're going to have challenges? Sure you are. Um, tell me a bylaw um, or um, anything that a council, um, a municipality has tried to pass that you haven't had had challenges. Um, as I said, my experience is meet those challenges with education, be it a one-on-one, -on -one, um, be it um, newspaper articles, be it lo um, local radio, TV, um, community groups, meet those challenges head on. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll bet you half the people that are, are making the challenges, making the concerns, um, don't know anything that we have just learned this evening about the value of trees and what we're actually attempting to preserve. Thanks, Tara. So, yep, it's going to be challenges. Uh, you're smart people. Um, you, you've been through um, this, uh, um, you know, a dozen hundred times in in your lifetime, and every challenge, there's going to be a solution, and it just takes some creative thinking, um, and and sort of weaving through to find that challenge. Thanks, Joe. Um, and it 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 will happen. Thank you. I did note in my travels around Bradford that there, you have a, a special school um, named after a special person, Chris Hadfield. And if you've ever read any of uh, Chris's uh, books, any of his works, um, you realize um, what a, a, a special person he, ha he is, but uh, what a unique experience that he had looking back down onto earth. Um, and I, I, I think if we take the lead from anyone, it's someone that has gone, uh, like Chris has, to outer space and looked back on earth and, and realized what we have uh, is so precious. And so Tara next is, is the quote um, that I, I'd like you, to, like you to think about. Um, so, you know, when Chris is up there looking back on, on, on this, this planet, um, he realized that it is so fragile. Um, at a moment's notice, um, we, could, we could be on the verge of disaster. And boy, uh, with climate change, we've seen it. And so what he's asking is um, for leadership. Um, for, for people to take action, big and small, um, to, to combat that um, so that we can continue to en enjoy the life that we enjoy. Tara, thanks. So the word preservation to me uh, means more than uh, passing a, a, a law, passing restrictions to actually preserve the tree itself. What it does, Tara, thank you, um, preservation, you're preserving history, you're preserving a legacy, you're preserving values, you're preserving your community, of course you're inverting the environment um, and life, life itself. Thank you. And so I'm, I'm going to ask that um, uh, the Peter, maybe the moderator, we can, we can bring Shannon on this. Um, 
Um, the next couple of slides are, are, are actually Shan, where, um, and, and maybe we should, should pause for a second and see if there's any, any comments from anyone at this point in time, um, because the next couple of slides are really sort of getting into more of the nitty, nitty gritty of uh, a tree preservation bylaw, what it means, what it takes, um, what, what it means for council, what it means for staff, and, and the actual details that people like Michael and, and Shan are going to have to deal with uh, in, in, the next, uh, in the next little while. Um, so Peter, maybe, maybe um, uh, if you'd like to open it up for any comments um, at this point in time, it's, it's great. Um, otherwise, I'd, I'd say let's, um, let, let Tan take, uh, Shan take the next couple of slides. Well, I wonder if we do open it up for any questions at this time. Uh, great presentation, uh, Dennis. It gives a lot of background, <laughs> kind words about our town. But uh, we have uh, Michael Hare and other staff people that uh, have really uh, taken the lead over the over the years because of that. So, Councillor Lamb. Yeah, I, I like it when Councillor Contois calls me the old oak tree because I've uh, been pushing that. But I recall going to um, FCM Federation of Canadian Municipalities a uh, number of years ago, and uh, one of the um, uh, sessions was about trees and they talked uh and it was quite an eye opener because uh they talked about municipalities uh, planting lollipop trees and they weren't growing and uh and and they took a, a great pains to explain what could be done and and the difference between something on the front lawn and something in the boulevard and and uh and such like that and uh you know what what can we do to uh, try to encourage uh I, I'm going to use the term Carolinian forest uh, type trees here. Uh, I realize we're on the upper edge of it, but with climate change and that, uh, you know, we're seeing, uh, uh, you know, tulip trees able to grow up here now. But um, I, I'll get into the minutia of the bylaw later, but uh, my, my concern is I'd like to congratulate my fellow councillors because they did buy my, uh, my request for oak trees and we've been planting oak trees uh, because it's easy to plant, uh, you know, fir trees and that, but they're hard to stand under and they're hard to, uh, you know, to have a picnic under and uh, uh, broadleaf uh, Carolinian type trees like oaks and, and such like that, uh, people can actually use them. And when you're in the park, yeah, it's uh, uh, a really great thing. So I'm hoping that uh, long after we're gone, that this town will continue to, uh, to, stay on the same track that we do. And I got to give credit to some of my fellow counselors because we have, uh, have changed the rules uh, as, far as, uh, as far as the urban forest. And, and we also recognize what's happening in a rural forest uh, because uh, there are trees out there that are, are getting along and you know, they're getting diseased and such like that. And uh, we want to encourage that, that when people put new trees in, uh, in their, on their property and what we do uh, on road allowances and in our parks is that they're going to be uh, for the long term. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor LaDuke. Yes, thank you, Roger. When I, uh, Dennis, I just want to, I just want to say a few words uh, uh, along with Councillor Lamb in a sense that we, we really appreciate the fact that you took a ride around our community and understood the, the effort that this council has put forward in, in, in tree preservation. Uh, we went around and did a, a full canopy study of uh, what we have in our urban and, and rural area of our community. So we invest quite a bit of money yearly into our uh, tree preservation and, and uh, uh, replacing trees that need to be replaced. So as Councilor Lamb said, we invested in oak trees. So it's nice to see that you took a look at our community and drove around and said, you know what, there is some great progress being made. And, and this is just the next step to where we think we're taking our tree uh, bylaw. And uh, it was a part of the healthy communities uh, uh, committee that was established by Mayor Keffer and this council in a sense to, to find a way to make this community much more healthier and, and seeing the presentation and understanding what you put on the floor for us, understanding how important trees really are is the real makeup to this, uh, to this bylaw. So uh, I'm very excited about this and uh, I thank you very much for coming and seeing our community and understanding. You took a great picture. I think that was of the Kuzmik Park. That is the, uh, the forest where you had the little playground area there. 
and then you took a nice picture of a six line. We were, you were going, I think, what east on a six line, uh, and we have those nice, beautiful trees on there. So, we, uh, we as council, I think, take great pride in what we do in our community to make it uh, much more climate friendly. So, uh, thank you for taking the time to do that for us tonight. Look forward to the rest of the presentation. Okay, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Any other comments at this time? Uh, Councillor Dykey? A lot of the words has been echoed, but I must say that uh, um, I think our staff has done a great job in managing what, what we have. And, uh, you know, when, I know on the South Simcoe streams, uh, Mike is always there to help them with uh, chips. And I know this event we just had two weeks ago, uh, the, the Parks and Recreation came out and helped all the students with whatever they needed with the uh, supplies uh, to the trees. And, the, and if you have a look at Fraser Creek, from 10 years ago where it is now, how the trees have developed. But we have all kinds of pockets of uh, areas of town that we've come a long way from uh, where we were and where we are now. I must say that uh, driving through town, as uh, as uh, Dennis did, uh, you can see different areas of town where we, we have a lot of uh, beautiful trees and, and they, uh, they have been maintained uh, uh, quite well uh, to date. Uh, I want to thank our staff for that. Uh, Okay, hey, with that, I think uh, we'll hand it to Shan and uh, Tara, if you can put the presentation back up. But, uh... Hi, sorry, I was uh, muted there. Uh, good evening, members of council and uh, mayor. Thank you for uh, having me speak with you tonight. Um, Dennis uh, described uh, pretty well why trees are so important, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. Um, they do provide uh, benefits for our climate, for our environment, and our psychological well-being. And I believe that they are assets for the whole community, not just for the person who owns the trees. And as uh, Bradford West Grillonbury is growing and more people are moving into the town, um, into some of these older residences or rural properties. Um, they are um, cutting down more of the mature trees that the previous uh, landowners might not have done. Um, and we had uh, many calls when I was there as a staff member from neighbors uh, panicking because someone was taking down a big tree in the yard and could the town come and do anything about it? And, and we could not. So uh, with uh, Michael Hare and Terry Forn and myself, uh, we discussed um, putting together a private tree cutting by law, and uh, that's where this uh, meeting has come to. So uh, next slide, please. So basically, the bylaw would be looking at um, the town being able Sorry, to, I didn't quite catch that. being able to control um, trees that would be removed on uh, privately owned properties for new development sites and for existing residences. However, uh, next slide, please. Not every tree um, would necessarily have to be protected or uh, prohibited from being removed. So some of the things you'd have to look at would be um, what, what type of tree um, is being proposed for removal? How large is it? Uh, where is it located? There could be exemptions for that. Say it's growing very close to someone's house. Um, we would let them take it down. Um, and the condition of the tree, which could involve either its health, does it have a disease? Um, is it in decline? Or its structure, it, does it look like it's a hazard and it's gonna come down right away? Next slide, please. So there would be an impact on the town resources of implementing and passing a, a bylaw. And that would include hiring a staff member or maybe even more than one um, to administer the program, uh, to do inspections, uh, to do approvals. So that's, that has a financial aspect to it. However, there would also be uh, financial uh, credits in terms of that we could charge people um, fees uh, for permits. Next slide, please. Other considerations, and this is, could be really complicated by a law. Uh, we've done research into uh, what's in place in other municipalities, and, uh, but there are some trends that run uh, 
within uh, many of the bylaws and other municipalities that we could follow. Um, so we could look at, we are looking at exemptions, well, people who are uh, running a cemetery, a golf course or a nursery, uh, municipal property, they would be allowed to remove trees. Um, how would we enforce compliance? Uh, what would be the enforcement? Uh, what would we, we would have penalties? What would the penalties be? Um, if someone wants to take a tree down and we allow it, we would ask them for compensation. Um, and then as part of that compensation, we would look at the size of the tree, such as if it's a small tree, maybe they would compensate for one tree. If it's a very large tree, maybe we would ask them to give us money or replant maybe six to 10 trees in its place to bring up the canopy uh, to meet what had been removed. And then um, if they do plant trees or say they're gonna protect trees during construction, uh, we would ask for possibly letter of credit or securities to be held for a period of time until we could determine whether the trees that have been planted or protected are remaining healthy. Next slide, please. So the next steps for this um, would be, we, uh, Mike O'Hare and his staff would propose a, a survey to be done uh, online on the website that the public could respond to. Uh, also in-house staff consultation. Um, a staff report to council would be written and then direction obtained. And legal staff uh, for the town would be involved uh, to make sure that the wording uh, meets the requirements. Next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Shannon that. So I'll open up to uh, comments or questions and uh, Councillor Lamb. Yes, I, uh, I read the report that Terry had sent and, and some of the other bylaws. Uh, I'll just talk about what I was concerned about and uh, that was some of them like if we if we pass a bylaw, it has to be something that our population will tolerate. Um, if we ha like, I, a couple of them looked so draconian that, uh, for instance, you couldn't put a birdhouse in a tree. Uh, I guess, let alone a treehouse, um, or uh, like you couldn't attach a hammock to the tree lest you put a you know a, a hook into it, uh, and it's a tree on your own property. Um, my concern is encroachments on neighbors uh, yards and such like that. Uh, weed trees, uh, like for instance, Manitoba maples. And there was a Manitoba maple in the next yard over mine and it crashed down after 25 years and took part of the fence. I, I got a chunk in my backyard that was too big to move and sit behind my shed. But now it's, you know, providing, uh, uh, you know, uh, habitat for whatever wants to live behind my shed. Uh, but those kinds of things, you know, and then somebody will plant a Russian olive right beside, right beside a, uh, the foundation, um, and then uh, over overhang on eaves, fences, etc. Um, I understand about that, and I also think that if we're going to look at what we're going to to do in the future, that you know, maybe we should be helping the, the public as well. Like if somebody wants to plant a tree, maybe we can give them some advice. The black walnut that's in my front yard that I spent 1200 bucks trimming a couple of years ago, uh, so it wouldn't fall in my house, in the neighbor's house. Uh, if I had known how big that tree was gonna get and, you know, cause it was only a little four foot stick, I wouldn't have planted it there. Uh, you know, it, I would have rather have had it, you know, somewhere else because uh, you know, that kind of a tree is, it's a beautiful tree to make a nice piece of furniture, but it kills everything underneath it. So there, you know, the type of advice that, that we need to give, um, then as far as um, uh, a bylaw, I'm not a big fan of creating another department. Um, I would rather work with the public and, and, and look at it that way. As far as new development, I agree fully. If somebody decides that they got 160 acres and and they and they want to go in and and just raise it right to the ground and and then move all the uh, uh, soil for proper drainage and such like that, that we need to know what's there. And I kind of like the fact that uh, they would end up having to uh, to you know put way more in than they took out 
because we've had issues where, uh, you know, some trees uh, like black walnuts and, and stuff that are sitting out in the country, uh, all of a sudden nobody wants them there because they, they want to put a few houses. So I think we need to, to look at that so that, I know the county has a bylaw in place for anything over an acre and a half and, and such like that, but I think we need to tighten up our, um, our bylaw, for, or sorry, our, uh, our uh, uh, agreements with uh, the development community where they have, uh, you know, they meet everything in the official plan uh, that um, that we end up winning instead of losing on that deal. And uh, they can go in and look ahead of time because quite often they might be able to save something. We got 150 year old trees in people's backyards in our town, especially the old part. And, you know, they got trunks on them that are, you know, five feet across. We also have trees that are dangerous. I mean, I just go over to the courthouse parking lot and look, and you can see a few of them look like they want to drop. And, uh, and all the maples that were planted along the um, uh, concession roads and that, some of them are getting a little bit worse for wear. I also think that we need to give advice to, uh, to new trees that we don't plant invasive species. You know, what, if, you can, if you can plant a sugar maple, why would you plant a Norway maple? Uh, you know, so I, I'm, you know, really, really interested in, um, and I would really like to be the leading, leading municipality to, to, to create a better broadleaf forest that we have up here. So um, I'm prepared to look at it, but I don't want to hurt people. I don't want to dis, uh, dismay people from, uh, from going and getting advice because it might cost them a thousand bucks to trim their tree. That I don't want to happen. I want to make sure that Everybody is in in on this deal, and if it costs us a few bucks to uh, have somebody go out and give advice, I'm prepared to do that. Thank you. Okay, hey, thank you, Council Lamb. Uh, Deputy Mayor Leduc. Yes, yeah, so thank you, Richard. I, I think Council Lamb touched on a lot of it. In my mind, the reason we're here tonight is it, it was basically a private or public or both bylaws. So we could have done a public bylaw where it was just on public right of things like that. We would deal with trees, but the committee looked at this and they, uh, with the help of Mike and Shan and others that, that decided that we would look at the both sides of this bylaw and look at the public and private bylaw. And I thought uh, in the end, in my mind, the, the biggest thing about this is the educational piece. And that's, I think what council I was getting to, the educational piece would be something that I'd be more than happy to deal with and, and basically uh, deliver that message to the community out there that what these trees are and how important they are to our whole uh, society and to our whole community when it comes to uh, uh, carbon, uh, climate change, things like that. So uh, I'm in full favor of let's go out and do a survey. I, I think that was a great idea. And I think it was Mike and Shan that brought that up that we should go out and do a survey with our community. So I, I certainly would like to see our uh, survey go out there so we can get some feedback from our community to find out what their thoughts and feelings are. Uh, I'm not here to say that we want to uh, uh, charge or punish anybody for anything, but tree trimming is tree trimming. And if you're going to tree and retreat, you're going to do it anyway, somehow. Uh, so I don't mind working with that, finding out how we can make that affordable for people, because if we keep the health of the tree healthy, that's what we're really after here. So um, I, I, I like that. I, I think it was a, something that our community, our, our health committee uh, wanted to do and delve into. And that's why we've, uh, we've come to the council right now. We thought it's an important bylaw. That's going to it's going to uh, bring up a lot of emotions within the community because there's a lot of people that uh, when you're on their property, that's my tree, I own it, and don't tell me what to do with it. Uh, that's the, going to be the feedback we're going to get. But I think we need to make sure we get out there, educate, educate, and educate as to why we're doing this and the importance for doing this. And I do like what Vaughn has. They're not too punitive. They're uh, they look to seem that they seem to have some uh, good balance for what they're talking about. And I think we can manage this, and that's why uh, we're here tonight to deal with this. But I think it's, uh, it's I think it's really about education. And so I, 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 le I lend it back to our staff, to Mike and, and others in his group, to find out how we can uh, deliver this bylaw in the most productive way we can. And that's about preservation of trees. So um, that's my comments, Your Worship, and I turn it over to you again. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Deputy Mayor. Other comments or questions? That uh, I wonder. Uh, Mike O'Hare, if uh, we could, if you want to uh, talk a little bit of, over the years, has there been a lot of conflict, with, you know, in the mature parts of town with uh, trees that are close to the property line, and and one neighbor wants to cut down, the other doesn't, or uh, how do you see the, you know, the 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 actual homeowners, uh, how do they react to the, the the different mature trees that we have in our town? 
thank you, Mr. Mayor. Actually, um, the experience that I've had, um, our group uh, took over the responsibility of the trees, I guess about maybe five, six years ago. Prior to that, it was with the um, Transportation Public Works Group. But um, we um, have had a, 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 I guess, a rude awakening on how tuned in the residents are to their trees. They, they certainly love them. Uh, Shan will tell you, the phone never stops ringing about, please assess my tree on the boulevard. It doesn't look that good. Um, so yeah, like, I mean, there was nine of them came in today. So during COVID, um, everybody was home looking at their, at their trees. And um, even though the one on the boulevard belongs to us, uh, they take it as their own, which is wonderful. They assume the responsibility of that. And um, what uh, Shan put in place, uh, which was missing, was uh, door hangers. And that goes back to Councillor Lamb's uh, comment about education. So whenever we are doing work on a street where there's tree uh, replacements going on, we will hang these door hangers and tell people what we're doing. And then when we plant a tree, there will be another information door hanger telling them about the tree. And um, if you would be so kind to help us out with the watering, because the watering is crucial on these new trees. And you know, part of the reason why we, we go with the caliper of trees that we do on the, on the boulevards is basically for mortality reasons. Larger trees have a tougher time to survive. They're, they're grown in, in, in we, we, get, we get them from farms that have basically the same soil. So we're not hoping, uh, we're not hoping for any type of uh, die off, but it happens. But it happens less with um, the smaller caliper trees. So we've had good success um, over the years with um, that size of tree. People will say, you know, why aren't you putting in a, a tree with a larger caliper? Well, there's more chance of it failing. But um, it's all about education. Um, we've had um, uh, what comes to mind is a gentleman, Bond Head. He wanted this tree coming down. It was lifting up the sidewalk. It was lifting up his driveway just a couple of years ago. And we said, well, 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 it'll come down, but you've got to plant. We, we didn't have a bylaw in place. He said, you got to plant two or three, maybe even four trees to replace it. He said, oh yeah, no problem at all. And he planted three more trees and I see them every day and they're, they're doing great. So um, the people um, will, like, I mean, it's all about education. You know, you want to take down that tree because you want to put a pool in. Is there any opportunities in your backyard to put some other trees? Is there an opportunity on your front lawn Put another tree, so that's what we want to do: is, is work with the with the residents, and um, you know that in Newmarket, for instance, they've just gone through this and they passed their uh, the private bylaw, I guess, uh, just before Christmas. But they um, it was a two year, maybe a three year process, and eighty percent of the canopy in in um, Newmarket is private. So if you're trying to do anything about the climate and if you're trying to do um, anything of, of any consequence, you really need to go onto the private side because they have the majority of the canopy. And if we're gonna do any work at all, like we can control our own canopy. We work hard at uh, saving town trees on town property. But um, when it comes to the private side, they've got the majority of the canopy and um, that's, that's the trees that we wanna zero in on. Uh, Thank you, uh, Dennis, you did a great job. We appreciate your help on this. Shan, another great job. Thank you so much. Um, this has been a passion of Shan's when she came to work with us. Oh, so tell me about your tree bylaws. And I said, well, we don't really have any. <laughs> so she got to work and uh, research. We have, um, we have file folders full of information from other cities and towns, what was good, what was bad, so um, we've got lots of background, so hopefully um, uh, we can move ahead with this. Uh, I guess it'll be baby steps, but the, the big component is education. Okay, thanks so much, Mike. That, uh, so I guess my one question is, is there a difference between the urban area of Bradford and the rural areas or you know, farms, uh, woodlots, uh sometimes well there's quite a bit of money in uh in um taking down certain trees or if you have a, a somebody come and check out a a wood lot and uh 
there is, uh, I guess, uh, harvesting that goes on in some woodlots. I'm just wondering how that that would apply to uh, uh, a tree bylaw. Um, whether a professional has to uh, survey certain areas to decide what uh, what trees uh, could come down, need to come down, but. Uh, is there any thought on that or any of our uh, neighboring municipalities, how they work in the rural areas? So we'll ask Shan, she's uh, done some research and I think she's got some background on, on the, um, the exemptions. Hi, yes, so um, uh, many of the neighboring municipalities that have tree body laws in place are part of uh, York region. And uh, York Region actually has a uh, forest conservation bylaw in place where you can't take out um, uh, tr uh, trees that are over, I think, um, two, two hectares worth of trees. Otherwise, you need to get a permit. And I know that um, in Georgina, what they do, um, if you're going through a development permit process, um, what you have to, what they do is they do ask for an arborist report for that forest or woodlot woodland area, but they only ask for uh, certain uh, significant trees to be identified. Otherwise, the rest of them can be clustered together, and they ask for compensation based on uh, fifty dollars, I think, per um, hundred feet, or something along those lines. I have to check exactly, but yeah. So they, they asked for compensation based on uh, uh, a linear measurement in those kinds of situations. Okay, thanks for that. And I know the County of Simcoe has a forestry bylaw as well, and that uh, they have to approve anything over two acres, something like that as well. And uh, But um, yeah, with our bylaw, if something could, could be looking uh, into that uh, um, sometimes for the health of a woodlot, uh, it should be pruned back every once in a while. So if a, a pruned arborist or whatever is uh, hired and uh, yeah, the, <laughs> the, 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 there's almost more money to be made in a woodlot than there is in growing soybeans. So that uh, just depending on the price of lumber, so yeah, uh, taking that into account anyways with any uh, tree bylaw that we have, that's to look into that so that there's no surprises uh, after it's written. So any other comments or questions? Uh, Councillor Orr? Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, everyone that's spoken so far has talked about communication and um, items such as uh, we talk about rural forests, uh, um, um, the managed rural forests. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that uh, they can. There's some tax advantage uh, to uh, to uh, um, to to be to to have your forest assessed and and go into a managed program, and uh, which is going to help your woodlot and uh, to uh, help. Uh, it, your uh, uh, to help your tax costs too. So I think it's, it's a lot of communication, a lot of uh, older trees uh, observation um, in a lot of our areas around town and everything. And this is on the outskirts of town. Of course, a lot of old trees came out of uh, uh, fence lines that uh, farmers had. And with the modern agriculture, of course, those fence lines are were uh, uh, hindrance. So a lot of trees came down because of those uh, situations. So the ones that are left, like uh, our Mayor Keffer has in the middle of his field, uh, have to be applauded for keeping them there. And uh, and because uh, I'm sure they were part of a fence line at one time. And uh, they, uh, uh, I think we need to promote that uh, those types of trees are, are kept. Yes, thanks, Councillor Orr. And Good comment about uh, tax relief for managed forests and and uh, and uh, it's education, letting people know uh, what's out there and, and uh, what opportunities there are. Councillor Scott, 
I think uh, I'll just comment that we need a tree preservation bylaw. Uh, we need to be in a position where major developments where applicable have those tree preservation zones so we can maintain some of the mature trees. And then we need compensatory measures where trees are being taken away, particularly on developments. I think on private property, urban or rural, uh, we don't need to reinvent the wheel here. We can pick a, a sensible approach that another municipality has already and get caught up to where most of our peer municipalities are in this regard, where uh, we can work with property owners to either protect or replace trees on, on residential properties. I, I see this really as about making sure the development community either protects mature trees or plants uh, some larger ratio of new trees to, to compensate us because we, we do want to have a, a strong urban tree canopy. We want uh, the benefits of trees in terms of, of cooling, climate change, uh, and aesthetics. Uh, we have some streets in town, uh, particularly in the east end of town, where you, you can see where there used to be trees, and then you can see uh, more into the neighborhood where those mature trees still are, and it really does make a real difference. I also think uh, it's not just about a bylaw. Uh, we need a bylaw. Um, and, and we can get caught off by having one, but we also need a program that goes beyond just our boulevard tree replacement plan. I, I would love to see, particularly on some of those areas where there used to be a boulevard, I'm thinking maybe like Simcoe Road, uh, a, a plan where residents could maybe buy from the town a tree. Uh, so it's not a boulevard replacement, but you could get a, a better bulk deal from a buying program like other municipalities, particularly York Region have, and I think the LSRCA does some of this as well, uh, because it would be great to be able to work with residents to, to replant trees in, in areas where there aren't any on front lawns or, or what have you. Um, my final comment is, is a question, which is uh, this meeting tonight and a survey, uh, where does that leave us? What's the timeline to actually have a bylaw presented to council? And I'll direct that, I guess, to Jeff. Hey, thanks, Councillor Scott. Jeff? Thank you, Worship. I think the intent is to move forward with the survey in the in the very near future, and to uh, um, the results of which will help us shape a, a bylaw tailored to uh, the interests of our, of our community. Um, I'd have to um, refer in details to to Mike on the timing for bringing that bylaw back. I think we'd likely work on some drafts, uh, discuss them with the Healthy Communities Advisory Committee, and. Um, and then bring their recommendations forward to council, possibly as early as this fall, but I'll ask Mike to chime in on that. Mike? Um, yeah, I think uh, that's certainly doable. Um, September, October to um, send out the, uh, the survey and then gather all the information and uh, get a report uh, back to council prior to uh, Christmas. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, Councillor Dyke. I guess, uh, Jeff, uh, this is going to be a question to Jeff. I guess Terry and yourself and Mike will come back and, and in the report uh, talk about, uh, it was mentioned about staff. Uh, uh, the town will need additional staff, overhead, office, you know, uh, that has to be worked out. And so we realized, you know, what what's the business plan is needed for, for this bylaw. You know, I, I can see merits to uh, some of it, but I just would recommend that we keep it uh, as simple as possible, uh, you know, especially for the residents. Subdivisions, uh, they, they usually have a, a plan for the higher professional people to do, do a layout of trees and all that. But I also want to mention that um, what I see is very important over the years is that uh, the ground that these trees are, are planted in, uh, we have various areas of town where with a minimum amount of soil or the soil is very clay and it's very hard for these trees to catch on. So something to work in a bylaw about the quality of, of dirt that goes into these holes and the surrounding of these holes in the sense of what's in the ground. I know on Maple Grove, there's been different issues on Luxury Avenue, there's been issues with uh, wires and, and this and that. And these trees never, uh, they don't turn out to be successful due to their their ground they have to grow in. So, so these are some things that need, need to be added in the bylaw so we properly <laughs> deal with the, all these uh, simple issues. 
Okay, thanks, Councilor Dykey. So any other comments, questions? But, uh, so I do have a uh, recommendation here that the private tree by law presentation be received. So can I have a mover and a seconder for this? Councilor Lamb, Deputy Mayor LaDuke. So uh, with that, I, I, you know, I'd really like to thank uh, Dennis Flanagan for being here and uh, giving us the background and the history and why uh, trees are so important. Shan, thank you for, for uh, uh, your years with our town and uh, for getting us this far and uh, with Mike and uh, the rest of the staff there to uh, keep us moving forward. It looks like we do have a timeline now moving forward. So thanks for that. And Councillor Lamb, comment? Yeah, just briefly, we're receiving the report, uh, but we also heard from staff that we're going to move forward. So is receiving the report still going to make it move forward? Or do we need to say that uh, uh, that uh, staff uh, report to council on the next steps that are required? Good point, Councillor Lamb. I'll just ask our CAO, Jeff. Thanks, Your Worship. Uh, it, certainly, we could add uh, a bit more to the resolution. Uh, I'm thinking if it uh, also directed staff to move forward with the community consultation program or something along those lines, that would be helpful. Um, part of tonight was also to test the waters to see what Council's interest in such a bylaw was. So I think there's um, at least an, um, a, uh, an interest in um, learning more about it and, and having some drafts come your way. And, and back to Councillor Dyke's point, uh, we will present some options um, on, on the tree preservation bylaw itself, really varying from uh, what I would call, or what uh, Councillor Lamb earlier called a draconian approach that is very controlling and, and uh, um, very protective of the canopy towards something that's more uh, liberal, perhaps, um, along with the implementation costs of, of those options. So uh, our first step will be to move forward with the survey and then collect the results of that and draft some some bylaws. Uh, but for tonight, if, if you give us direction to move forward with the survey, that's all we need. Thank you. Okay, so um, Councillor Scott? Um, just on that, what happens next, I alluded to this in my comments, but if we could look at this a little more broadly, not just a tree preservation bylaw, but give some thought in, in the subsequent report to that idea of a, a tree replacement program beyond just our boulevard trees, I think that's an important piece of the puzzle. Otherwise, we're we're uh, we're sort of only looking at, at half of the, the equation. So uh, the the bylaw is the enforcement piece, but the the collaborative piece where the town actually could play some role with with tree planting, working with residents. I I, I think uh, maybe it's the carrot and the stick is a better way to put it. Hey, thanks, Councillor Scott. So I think we will have an amendment. So Tara, I don't know whether you have wording for right now. The recommendation is that the private tree bylaw presentation be received, and that next steps as discussed or do you have wording tara i do have wording let me just share my screen here for a second yes okay is that uh, good enough uh, council lamb or do we want to add uh, and that uh, Staff be directed to conduct a community survey on tree preservation by bylaws. Your Worship, this would cover uh, uh, most concerns, uh, no matter. Uh, and you know, I know it's not only about boulevard trees; it's about the whole canopy. So that uh, could be, uh, uh, you know, not only out on the sixth line, but also on on Maple Grove Avenue. So I think it would work. Okay, so that uh, um, can this be a friendly amendment and Deputy Mayor LaDuke comment? 
Yeah, this is here tonight because the, the, the healthy communities wanted to bring this to council's attention because it's such a, an extensive bylaw. Uh, the staff been working on this for a long time. The health community has been working on this for a long time. So so I have no problem with the amendment. It's just uh, the amendment could be that uh, the staff work through the healthy community, the healthy communities committee to conduct a, a survey throughout the community. Like uh, it's been the healthy community, the, the healthy committee, the healthy community. Sorry, I'm having my trouble here with my words tonight. The Healthy Community Committee working through this process for this bylaw. So it's here tonight because it was such an extensive program that we wanted no surprises for council. But this was to see what your uh, feelings and thoughts were on this so that the committee could continue to move forward, make recommendations to staff and say, yes, let's proceed with this and let's uh, make sure. And I, I, I certainly love Councillor Scott's idea. I uh, have been uh, asked by many residents to start up a tree program. So that could come back to our, uh, that's certainly what's our committee if you want. And we can certainly ask for that to be part of uh, the whole program. But I have no problem with the amendment. I'm just saying that the, the, the committee was certainly going to push this forward no matter what. We were just trying to see about your feedback to make sure that you weren't surprised when we bring it in our uh, report as a uh, as a recommendation. So. No problem with the, with moving this forward. Okay, so with that, we have a, a recommendation as amended on the floor. So I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? And it is carried. So with that, we'll move on to item 5.1, confirm proceedings, recommendation of the bylaw 2021-50, a bylaw to confirm proceedings of the special council meeting dated May the 24th, 2022, be enacted. Mover and a seconder for this. Uh, Councilor Ferragini, Councilor Scott, any comments? Call for the vote, all in favor? It is carried. And adjournment, recommendation that the meeting is hereby adjourned at 8.03 p.m. Mover and a seconder for this. Councillor Scott, Councillor Dyke, all in favor? And it is carried. We are adjourned.